Kilda and uh, hang on. <laughs> Got it wrong. <laughs> and that's the never had episode. to do it in front of an audience. Before. I've never had to do this in front of people. That's what I'm getting he said. performance anxiety. Yeah, that was like the first time I had sex. Like, <laughs> in front of people. In front of people. Tiamu is a different place, guys. Kia ora, g'day, and welcome to the history of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Episode 100! We made it to triple digits. Yes, um, we, we all did it. We all did it, yes. As I'm sure you can hear, um, there's not just me on this podcast, there is a few other people. Bobby Big Nuts! Um, Bobby <laughs> Big Nuts! <laughs> Okay, Brad, do you want to introduce yourself first? <laughs> I think he already has, hasn't he? So I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I stopped podcasting like regularly when I left the main campaign of what I do. Um, and so I'm just getting some weird energy off my chest. Sorry to derail this, Thomas. I'm Brad, and that's really all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Uh, Waffles, we'll go with you next. Hi, I'm Waffles. I do a little improv podcast called Waffles and Mates Talk About Things. Uh, check us out. You might like us. Uh, but also on this episode, I will be playing the role of Robert Muldoon. Uh, coming here to talk about the uh, history of New Zealand politics and why schnapps is definitely the drink for Prime Ministers. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and Sam. Hi, I'm Sam. You guys know who I am. <laughs> Wow. Just the confidence. <laughs> the absolute confidence. Aaron Gilmore didn't realize he was in here. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, it's me. It's me. Brace yourself, <laughs> listeners. It's me. So I've brought you all here today partially as a bit of a, uh, a thank you for, um, I guess, supporting me on my podcast journey. You three have kindly let me on your own podcasts at some point or another over the last four years. Um, however, by the nature of my podcast, you're not allowed on it, usually. Um, no, we're too dumb. You're too dumb, unfortunately. You, whatever credentials you have, they are the wrong ones. Uh, so, <laughs> so this was a way to uh, get you on to my podcast um, in a way that made sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to play essentially a quiz-style game. Uh, for anyone at home who has seen the College Humor or Dropout show, Um, Actually, that is pretty much exactly what we're going to play, except I have Kiwiified it, so I'm calling it Bollocks, um, because it's all about guessing what is wrong with the statements that I'm going to give you. So I'm going to give you um, a variety of statements um, a that basically are somehow related to New Zealand history, and your job is to guess what is wrong with them. Now, unlike the actual um, actually show, where they have a buzzer and they time in, it's all about speed, we're not going to do that. I am just going to have you either write down your answer or say it, and as long as you get it, roughly close i'm going to be quite generous i realize that you guys probably don't know the answers to a lot of these questions so as long as you get it in the wheelhouse as long as you're in the vague postcode i'm going to give you a point there will also be three what they call shiny questions which are random slightly different questions than the general statements and then at the end there will be what they call a real life skills question something to do with basically how you go about your life in modern day new zealand are we ready we are ready i just want to point out that the biggest load of bollocks on the sofa is that the three of us guests probably have some area of expertise that we could have contributed to your lovely show but you've gone nah stuff that i'm going to get these guys on and make them look like absolute morons <laughs> well the the unifying thing that you have between the three of you is that you're all funny uh so <laughs> So Brad looks having... disturbed by that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out of the no four pressure. of us, I mean, Brad is the only one who's like the professional comedian, I guess. Or was a professional comedian. I don't know if you are still. I barely was then. <laughs> <laughs> Question one. Um, we're going to start with something easy, um, something relatively straightforward, and something light. It is politics. The 1984 election saw the National Party under Robert Muldoon lose to the David Lungy led National uh, Labour Party. Fuck, okay, hang on. <laughs> hang on. I've been drinking a little, so. Top quality podcast. So was Muldoon. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, this was especially funny because Muldoon himself had called the election early, live on telly, while visibly drunk, leading to the election being called the Vodka Vote. Uh, um, actually, it was called the Schnapps election. Yes, you are correct, Waffles. Um, so it was called Schnapps election because it was a snap election and he was drunk on telly. Oh, um, that's why they called that's it. That's why, yeah. So it's because it was a snap election. Question two is a World War Two question. The Battle of K Road was a fight between American soldiers stationed in Auckland during World War Two and local Kiwi soldiers on an evening in 1943. Supposedly started by the Americans who objected to Māori being able to drink at the same bar as them. As a result, a fight broke out between 1,000 people that lasted a few hours. Bollocks, I feel like that happened in Wellington. Yeah. Can't remember the name of it, but I feel like it happened in Wellington, Mm -hmm. not Auckland. I feel like it was Australians, not Americans. (laughs) (laughs) Waffles? Yeah, I got nothing. I know this happened. I have no idea the details. It did of happen. It. Like there was a fight with foreign soldiers in New Zealand yep. soil, but I couldn't tell you anything else. In that case, Sam, you are correct. It was not in Auckland. It was in Wellington. Do you know what street it was on? Uh, I'm going to name the only street in Wellington that I know, which is one that I've thrown up on many a time, Cuba Street. No, it's not Cuba Street. You're very close, though. Uh, It was called the Battle of Manners Street. Ah. Um, So it occurred in Manners Street here in Wellington. Um, Supposedly, two people died um, as well. Like, it was quite a big fight. Um, It lasted, yeah, quite a long time. Um, and was between um, Kiwi soldiers and American soldiers um, over basically Māori, whether they're allowed to drink, because uh, allegedly the Americans were super racist. Um, what? Allegedly? <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> oh, oh, cool bollocks. Americans still ah, are racist. <laughs> Another thing, actually, is um, one of the things that came out at the time was Kiwi women quite liked the American soldiers, um, and so they ended up, you know, fraternizing with them quite often and that ended up with people saying things like the americans were um was it oversexed overworked and over and here, over here. Or, and something like that so they were not well liked um in new zealand in general my grandma told me that story about how the americans were quite well liked yes yeah and uh, your grandfather was uh, no don't <laughs> <laughs> He went back to South Dakota. I've never actually spoken to him. So <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine the fight. Just some American guy going, we hate those guys. And the Kiwis go, well, you hate them not as much as we do. Exactly. Well, we commemorated what? that so... battle by eventually building a McDonald's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Where this now happens every Friday night. It's historical um, reenactments. It's historical reenactment. Yeah. Exactly. It's just some very extreme live action role playing. That's exactly what Exactly. It is. <laughs> we just get really into it. It's just very, <laughs> we take our characters very seriously. Question three is all about our founding document, Tiriti o Waitangi. Although the discussion of the treaty occurred over one to two days, the actual signing happened on the 6th of February, 1840. Soon-to-be Governor William Hobson was caught by surprise when he was woken up very early in the morning to be told that the deal was on and he needed to get out there. Despite his frantic rush to get ready, Hobson still managed to attend in his full naval attire, as per his rank of commander in the British Navy. I know this one, but I'll give other people opportunities. Um, Yeah, that's actually bollocks. They they woke... They didn't wake Hobson up for that. They they woke him up to... um... Tell him that there was free KFC outside, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sam, do you do you have a, a thought? Yeah, I'm going to go bollocks. I'm going to say they didn't wake him up because he was a colonial android that was sent here to do <laughs> local population. So he was just paused in one corner of the room, fully yeah. already dressed, ready to go. He, he had yeah, and they just, they just flicked him on. They just, just went, like, flicked the switch. Flicked the like, switch, and he, yeah. Colonialize, colonialize. Yeah, he was off. <laughs> okay, uh, Waffles, what do you think the answer is? He was in his pajamas. He never got dressed. But when they took the official portrait, he asked the painter to paint him as if he was in his full regalia, making it the first instance of in history of somebody using a filter on a selfie. That is a hundred percent correct. Oh, I'm Waffles. Yeah. I know. I read books. <laughs> 
<laughs> I listen to history podcasts. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's a hundred percent correct. Um, I wasn't able to find a source that said he was in his pajamas, but that is this that is the story that I have heard. But the the general gist is that he was not um he was not wearing his naval attire as depicted in the very famous painting with everyone signing it and that sort of stuff he was uh at the very least in his civilian clothes uh but potentially in his gym jams just in the 90s no, they were all furries <laughs> they were all dressed as like foxes <laughs> and pandas <laughs> yes but i'd like to say in honor of hobston i myself am in my pajamas Jim James. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm continuing the proud kiwi tradition of proud kiwi, asking yeah. in your jimmies <laughs> yeah i mean to be fair um you know going to important events or like going to the dairy like with no shoes on um, hey, going to the dairy is an important event exactly but you know like the idea that like new zealand is quite casual and that sort of stuff is really been started in its inception and in, in the very point where New Zealand really became an official sort of um, legal entity was right at the Treaty of Waitangi where he was wearing his gym jams. Um, and presumably everyone else was wearing very nice, fancy clothes. Is anyone else um, tearing up with pride right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's something. I'm definitely tearing up with something. Civic yeah. pride. <laughs> Just a single Civic tear pride. dripping down my cheek for, for one man's pajamas. to, to Great see. country on the planet. <laughs> Greatest country on the planet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> not to be a super downer, but Hobson was actually a really bad guy. Yes. Um, he was, was not very nice. <laughs> colonial bust. Hence my answer. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and with that, that brings us to our first shiny question. So this, what I've just sent you, is a group of acronyms. And I want you to write down what you think those acronyms mean. Okay. So while they're doing that, for the listeners, I will read out the acronyms for you. So we've got ACC, MFAT, ILT, Jaffa, NIWA, ANZUS, ANZAC, Karen, NSN, PAYE, RNZAF, PPTA, SUB, TEAL, WINS, and QMS. Can I just ask, is Soob side boob? Soob is not side boob. I've never heard of Soob before. That's a new one to me. Some of these I actually deal with in my day job um, on a, on the reg. So, like, I'm very confident mm-hmm. about a handful of these. I think I know three, maybe four. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brad, in that case, um, if everyone's finished, um, do you want to read out the ones that you are very confident in? Yes. So, MFAT, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Jaffa, just another fucking Aucklander. Don't deal with that at work, but that's just one I know. Uh, <laughs> NIWA, a National Institute of Water and Atmospheric Research. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. ANZAC, Australia New Zealand Army Corps. Mm-hmm. Uh, RNZAF, Royal New Zealand uh, Air Force. Mm-hmm. Uh, WINS, Work and Income New Zealand. Yep. And for bonus points, I've got QMS is uh, Queen Monkey Seaman. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i had you can't you can't say that she she's just died yeah oh, how so do you think she, she died can. thomas <laughs> the inquiry has is finished um oh like also nsc national student number paye pay as you earn sorry to take like most of them <laughs> yeah yeah this is the one chance i get in this whole podcast episode to sound remotely intelligent <laughs> i'll play the other easy one acc is accident compensation corporation yep you did Anzac, Anzus, didn't you? Uh, Australia, New Zealand, United States. Yep. A uh, trades thing? Yeah, it is a trade thing, um, but it doesn't have, weirdly, does not have anything about what it actually is. It's just Australia, New Zealand, United States. That's all it is. Yep. Um, and sorry, no, it's not a trade thing. Well, it might be a trade thing, but it's primarily a military thing. Oh, yeah, it's like a We got military. kicked out for a bit and then got brought <laughs> back in in, like, 2015. Uh, my mum would kill me if I didn't know what PPTA, which is the... New Zealand Post Primary Teachers Association. That's correct. It is. Yes, Mum's a school teacher, so I should know that one. <laughs> I, d- I don't know what the Karen stands for, but I definitely deal with quite a few Karens on a regular. You would. You'd actually. I, I was surprised that this was actually a thing. Um, it's. It stands for the Kiwi Advanced Research and Education Network. <laughs> Rename, Which guys. I can't, rebrand. Yeah. Well, I can't <laughs> yeah. help but think that that was a hundred percent on purpose. Yeah. Where they were like, "Oh, we could call ourselves 
the New Zealand Advanced Research and Education Network. But guys, I'm seeing a real opportunity here. <laughs> the brand recognition. <laughs> Brain it's real Rick positive is... press. Yeah, everyone, when they hear the name Karen, they're like, oh, yeah, that's a good thing. These yeah. Karen Google searches have gone through the roof. Let's jump on that. <laughs> <laughs> everyone wants to know what a Karen is. How's that time to shine? Um, you have to let so me know what Karen. my boob is. I'm, I'm desperate to know that. I don't, I don't even have Soob, a... Soob, you're yeah. actually really close with that one. Yes. Um, in, in a sense. Um, it's the small owner-operated brothels. Wow. Um, yeah, so it's like a... I think it's like a union thing. Um so it, it, yeah so it's a it's essentially a group of um small businesses that are all brothels somebody's so orgasming big, over barrel big owner operated brothels sorry come again so which <laughs> boom that's what they say big owner operated brothels <laughs> i guess so yeah the ilt um that's one um i guess i put in there for myself um, that's the invercargill licensing trust holy um, oh. <laughs> i thought it was a different type of sandwich like you go you get yeah, oh, a cafe on the sad. weekend, you, you order an ILT. Does anyone have any thoughts on what TEAL might be? Uh, as an acronym, I have no idea, but could TEAL be uh, the the hypothetical um, political relationship between green and blue? <laughs> TEAL deal between uh, the greens and teal the nets? TEAL deal! <laughs> oh, I like the idea, but no, that's not what it is. No, TEAL is the predecessor to Air New Zealand. It stands for Tasman Empire Airways Limited. And then they combined with a couple of other airlines to make Air New Zealand. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Smaller old planes with teal on them. Exactly, mm. yeah. yeah. So that's why the older planes, before they changed the colour scheme to black, that's why they were that bluey, kind of greeny colour, is because they used to be called teal. Wow. Um, yeah. So the last one that we haven't got is QMS. Oh, we did with this Queen Monkey semen. We got that yeah, one. Queen, you definitely oh, Queen Monkey. Quali- yeah, quality management system. I don't know. You're actually really fucking close. It is management system. It's the quota management system. Yeah. It's oh, what we use in New yes. Zealand to manage um, how much various groups of people and companies are allowed to fish out of the ocean. Correct. Um, and the that. rivers. Yeah. So with that, um, do you guys want to tally up what you got correct and then tell me how many you got? Okay, so there was 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. I got 22. <laughs> that doesn't sound right. <laughs> eight. I got eight. I've got to make it up somewhere. Um, I got four. Nine. 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 Yeah. Excellent. Um, I think that means uh, it's all still quite close at this stage. Um, I'm going to count every one of those that you got correct as an individual point. Again, those listeners who have actually seen, I'm um, actually will be raging at me because that's not how it works. Um, don't care. This is my show. Uh, so <laughs> start your I'm own podcast, it. do a hundred episodes, and then get you a can do it mediums yourself. On then you can do your own scoring system. Yeah. Exactly. I, I just um, love the only reason why people podcast. I just love the idea of a whole bunch of people. I'm actuallying you while you're doing an I'm actually episode. I think that's very ironic. Yeah, I mean <laughs> they would. They 100% would. Yes! Um, <laughs> I mean, Sam, have you met nerds? <laughs> have I met nerds? <laughs> <laughs> have I met nerds? He's me! <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> A reference that only nerds would get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly! <laughs> okay. Question four. Of course... We had to get him in there. Is a Bobby Big Nuts question. Oh. Bob Simple got his start in New Zealand in the West Coast labour movement, but he's more well known for the tank he designed bearing his name. The design was taken from an Australian engineering textbook, with the idea being to take a tractor and shove armour and guns on top of it. Three were built as a proof of concept, but none of them saw any proper action. Oh, one of them definitely saw some action. <laughs> My grandma told me a story about seeing some action with American soldiers. Yep, <laughs> where I was going with it. <laughs> uh, bollocks! All three of them uh, saw some action. All three of them got taken out into the fields and they they shot cows. I'm half tempted to say something about simple not necessarily getting a start on the west coast but didn't he come from australia or something okay that is technically correct but he i guess 
what I was going for was he got his, I did say he got his start in New Zealand, not rather in general. So you are correct in that he did Fair get enough. his start in up on a technicality. Yeah, in the labor in the labor movement in Australia. Um, but where he came to New Zealand and got his start here was in the West Coast. Um, actually, Fair no. enough. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, have a crack at it. Have a try. <laughs> I I have nothing except I'm going to say that I don't feel like it was based on an Australian thing. I feel like it was based on somewhere else. I think it was based off his own head. He just made it up one day. I, I think like, it was oh, based on it... consumption of drugs. In a surprising it, you know, just... twist. Sam, you are really close. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is... That's not quite... Yeah, I mean, you are correct. It wasn't based on an Australian thing. It was based on something else. German? Um... Do you? It wasn't German. Do you want to have a guess at what you what it was based on? It wasn't an Australian engineering textbook. It was something else. Uh, something American. Oh, NASCAR. Not NASCAR. Guns and Cousins magazine. <laughs> <laughs> it may as well have been, but no. It's, some sort it of American started off as the American, presidential limo, like a bulldo. Nah, like an American tractor. It was based off an American tractor, yeah, but something a bit more specific. Uh, I don't think you're going to uh, get it. No, no, no. More I'm, specifically, I'm it was based off an American postcard. What? <laughs> yeah, so he saw a picture on an American postcard and thought, that seems like a good idea. <laughs> uh, went down to Tamuka, said to the um, Ministry of Public Works, I want you to build this. <laughs> and, of course, they probably told him, that's fucking insane how are we meant to design anything uh, without any sort of plans. Then he said, here's the plans, and he he just lumped his nuts on the desk. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Quite a lot of people don't actually don't actually know this, but the giant carrot in Arakuni was actually based on the postcard of the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> so I've given all three of you points there. Um, don't give me points for that. Don't no, give, you did get, I reward stupidity. You did get something correct which is you you did say that one of them did see action no, i said all three saw action all three okay well i'm not giving you a point then. i'm taking that <laughs> yes. away. on a system um one of them did see action sort of in the pacific but it saw it as a tractor not as a tank um so they were using it to move earth and that sort of stuff rather than as an actual tank just imagine being the dudes that received the say hey we've got you a new tank what <laughs> question five is about the South African rugby tour. The 1981 rugby tour of New Zealand was the first time that the South African Springboks had played against the Māori members of the All Blacks due to the ongoing apartheid. The tour caused a lot of controversy that saw many protests, police violence, and even a plane dropping bombs during one game. So that, I know yeah, so that, somebody else asked. That's bollocks, because I cannot imagine South Africa being involved in something racist. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take a stab yep. and say the plane didn't drop bombs, it dropped flour instead, but it still did disrupt the match. Yeah, I was, I was going to say was, as well. I mean, like, flour bombs, are we going to get very technical on that? Yeah, like, I think the plan was to drop bombs, and then the bombs were too heavy, and so they just dropped flour instead, because that was actually light enough they could actually take up in a little Cessna. Yeah, I know how to Google too. <laughs> Google. Like this, I, this I saw his my... hands. <laughs> yeah, there's, I, I no, saw there's his no hands. googling there. <laughs> no, this was my high school history. Like this was probably the only New Zealand history I ever learned in high school. We had to do a whole uh, project and report all around the South African tours. I know a lot of. Oh, good work. It's very good interesting work. stuff. But clearly, waffles not enough because that was not Ooh. what I was looking for. Really? Although you are correct that the um the the when I say bombs. Uh, they weren't bomb bombs. They weren't explosive bombs. They were flower bombs. You are correct there. So I will give you a point for that. But that's not what I was looking for. Shame. What I was, what, <laughs> yes. what I was looking for was that this wasn't the first time that the Springboks played against Maori. That was actually going to be my serious guess oh, if I gave one. Damn it. <laughs> I knew that. Should that's the first thing I thought, and then I got fixated on the stupid bombs. God damn it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not going to lie, I put the bombs in there on purpose because I thought you guys might go for it. <laughs> we'll taste him more so he deliberately lied to us so that we wouldn't catch the other no, lie. he just chose well, his didn't, language. I didn't lie to you. Make I just said like the plane idiots. bombs. I did not specify what kind of bombs. As you correctly pointed out, they were flower bombs. But no, the first time, um, or 
the the Springboks had played against Māori previously. They were declared honorary whites in the 1970 All Blacks tour of South Africa. <laughs> so they had actually played against them. I know this. <laughs> a bit of ironic um, naming there, Thomas, but sure. Thomas, why are you so interested in the past? It's a horrible place. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I guess when you put it that way, it is. Um, it does make it sound a bit bad, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just a bit. We'll tolerate bit, the Browns yeah. for a little bit. We'll just pretend they're white. So that was is what allowed them to stay in the same hotels, go to the same restaurants, and be on the same field as the all-white South African team. Um, I thought the so, all-whites yeah. were our, our, our soccer team. Uh, they are our soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> Who are our black cop are... men? <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's the hockey badminton. team, badminton, isn't it? Badminton. Yeah, the badminton. That's right. They were the black cocks for a little bit. <laughs> no, black sticks is the is the hockey team. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, I have a fun fact for this one as well, though. Um, there was another tour in 1976 where the All Blacks toured in South Africa as a game. This saw 29 mostly African nations boycott the Olympics in Montreal the same year because they requested that the in, uh, the uh, International Olympics Committee uh, to ban us from the Olympics, which the IOC refused to do. So as such, um, we had broken the UN sports embargo on South Africa. And as a result, um, these African nations thought that we nominally supported the apartheid. Um, and so they boycotted the Olympics that year. Wow. Which is... I thought it was really weird because normally when you hear about people boycotting the Olympics, it's like, you know, Russia did something bad or it's like North Korea got banned or something like that. It's not like, no, 29 nations didn't go to the Olympics because they fucking hate New Zealand. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So I thought that's that was... like the one massive New Zealand history fun fact that I know that I'm like, <laughs> man, if that comes up, I'm going to smoke this. It looks so smart. <laughs> Ah. No, no. Unfortunately, I did not. No. I thought it was too obscure, um, so I didn't put it in. See, I'm just glad Thanks, that we're bro. finally done with all this controversy in sports, uh, and that we can just all watch our favourite sports teams without any politics whatsoever getting involved. Uh, so make sure you know you watch the uh, you know Qatar Soccer World Cup. I'm sure that's you know completely above board and no no fine. politics or any racial mess there at all. Uh, so. I'm glad that's all in the past and behind us. Question six. Um, Of course, again, we had to have something about this in uh, New Zealand history. It is technically within the remit of um, Hans, which does end in 2000, but these were filmed in 1999, so it counts as The Lord of the Rings. Sam, if you get this wrong, this is going to be really bad. I know! You're here to make me look like an idiot! This is what... ah. No, you're here to make (laughs) you look like an idiot. (laughs) Doing my own job! Excellent. I would like to also thank my partner for helping me with this question, because they are a massive Lord of the Rings fan. So they helped me come up with a really good question um, that wasn't something like... Oh, Viggo Mortensen caught a knife, or he broke his toe, or some other bullshit like that that everyone knows. So hopefully this one will be a little bit of a challenge. In a potentially insane move, Gollum. the Rohan town... <laughs> uh, it's got nothing to do with Gollum. In a potentially insane move, the Rohan town of Idaris was built on in its entirety on a rocky hill in South Canterbury for the filming of The Lord of the Rings. Although the majority of the town was dismantled after completion, Medusulid, I can't pronounce that, the Golden Hall, was left standing. Adventurous fans can still make the long tramp to the remote filming site. It was built in South Canterbury, which is quite fun. They went around looking for, like, a fancy hill to put it on. Oh, fuck, where are you going to find a hill in New Zealand? I know. Well, interestingly, in South Canterbury, which is famous for being in the Canterbury Plains, and Plains are also famous for not having many <laughs> hills. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to call bollocks that you're allowed to tramp there. Mm-hmm. I reckon it's like conservation land that you're not allowed to go. Yep, that's a good guess. I'm going to call bollocks and say that it was actually a Star Wars film and not Lord of the Rings. Okay. Yeah, the prequels were famously filmed in South Canterbury. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
the Cantor men. I mean, what, what, I'm out. What I'm, scenes I'm, in the? I'm out. I'm, like, I'm blanking. <laughs> I am so blanking. These guys have got great guesses. Just roll me out for this question. I've failed on the movie question, and I'm about to say goodbye. Hey, thank you, everyone. If you want to listen to my podcast, you can find. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to give this one to Brad because you were kind of the closest. Participation award. You're not allowed to tramp out there because it's conservation land. Um, I actually don't know that. I believe it's private farming land, so you may not be able to tramp out there. But also, the Golden Hall is not still standing. The entire set was dismantled. Yeah, but it was uh, dismantled by that. orcs. We all watched the film. We watched the film, yeah. <laughs> but Because the, th- the thing is, of course, Hobbiton... Um, was also dismantled yes. after the Lord of the Rings films. It was only rebuilt for the Hobbit films, and then that's what you go and see when you go to uh, Hobbiton near Matamata is actually the set from The Hobbit. Um, so it's actually only kind of through luck that Hobbiton actually exists. Yeah, you couldn't ask really. me questions about that. The tourist <laughs> tourist spot that's like literally 40, 40 minutes drive from my house that I've been to twice that I've, you know, done the tour. Couldn't ask me questions about that. Oh, no, let's pick Edoras in the middle of the South Island. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> South Island, is that a place? Blank. <laughs> oh, no. You are not going to like this next shiny question, then. If you want to follow my podcast, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. I'm clearly a moron. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> what does he know? Okay, I'm going to send you a list of places in New Zealand, and I want you to try and place them on this map um, where you think these are. And just to make it not super too difficult, I have split them up between the North Island and the South Island, so you at least have a slight sort of idea of where they are. Oh, I, I was thinking, South Island, I know where that is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no. <laughs> I found it! <laughs> yeah. No, it looks it looks better in my notes, because I've got it like emboldened and underlined, and that doesn't apparently transfer to Twitter. <laughs> Oh, I, I know we're two. No, so you don't have to guess where that is. That's just to indicate that those four are in the South Island somewhere. I know two of these without Googling or without looking at the map even. So for the listeners at home, um, the South Island ones are Kadrona, Dipton, Methvin, and Runanga. And the North Island ones are Kafia, Stratford, Mahia, and Ekatahuna. Like, I've physically been to most of these places. I've... <laughs> driven through them i've even stopped and had lunch in some of them i'm trying to remember where they are (laughs) so again i'll be quite generous with this as long as you're pretty vaguely in the correct area i'll I'll give it to you yeah Um, but again work it on the honor system i'll just give you the two that i know if that's yep um so like cadrona because i've been snowboarding there it's kind of sort of near wanaka (laughs) yep 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 um and ikatahuna is on um the east coast on the way between on the way between wellington and napier no it's not it's not coastal but it's on that co- like that road that you take to get to the east coast from wellington i just want to yeah it is vaguely in that direction I've through here it. i've got it it's it's listed i've listed it as just south of palmerston north i'm gonna let uh waffles go next as well because i actually do have a um a, like a degree in geography and i know where all eight of these places are <laughs> oh 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 now now see he was acting dumb before yeah, now yeah he's, hey. make us he's like i don't know anything about the thing that my podcast is about <laughs> oh, no but <laughs> no don't come to me for any sort of movie related wisdom but yeah but where random towns are in new zealand sam oh, sam's, sam's actually exactly prepping to release his new podcast guns um the <laughs> geography of aotearoa new zealand <laughs> It's just it's just him listing like towns and their population yeah. and where they are. Just starting at the north, slowly wake his way down. It's a yeah. Eight thousand. <laughs> Six thousand. These are places near Toronga. Hundred and thirty thousand. <laughs> Part of Toronga is Mount Moganui, where I live. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> Come back next week to recover Rotorua and the surrounding areas. Review us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, I grew Spotify. Up in or... 8,000 people. That's near Cambridge. Cambridge has roughly the same. Uh, uh, sorry, Waffles, what have you got? The only one I think I know is Methvin, which is like South Canterbury. It is. It is South Canterbury. 
uh, my I've wife, my lovely wife. Driven through Tamaru. it on the way to Dunedin. I yep. know that much. Between yep. Christchurch and Tamaru, you turn off to go to Methven. It's a little bit further west. Yep. yep. They have good pies in Methven. I, or at least they had last time I was there, which was about probably five years ago. Yeah, no, I've heard there's good pies in Fairley. Yes. Which is, um, Fairley pies. Yes. Yeah, yep. a lot of people tell me there's good pies in Fairley. Um, one of my workmates actually like bought one frozen and then flew it all the way up to me here in Wellington, which was very nice of him. See, but of you, course, with it being frozen, it was like kind of average by yeah. the time it got here. Yeah. So you could say that it was fairly good. good pie. I could, you could say it was fairly good. Yeah. Oh, all right, Sam. Let's. What? what where's everywhere else? Okay. What else do we have? Uh, Dipton. Dipton. Ooh, Dipton okay. what? <laughs> Dipton what? Dipton. I feel is going to be near your ways, isn't it? The bottom of the South Island, kind of near Invercargill. That's correct. It is near Invercargill. Um, it is just south of Lumsden. Yes. Um, which is where we used to get our ice creams when we went to Queenstown. Um, but also, it's also famous for, um, that's where Bill English is from. Who? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, former Prime Minister for about, like, three months. <laughs> That also ran. So it was about just as exciting as Dipton. Just as exciting as Dipton. Yeah, so he was called the Dipton Drawler um, because of how he would, like, speak. And, of course, he's got that, you know, the the Southland R's and, and that sort of thing. But it's it's really just, like, four houses in a dairy. It is not much there. Because um, everyone just general? dipped out. Uh, Runanga. Runanga is uh, I had um, I had family in Westport, and I believe it's a little bit further south than that near Greymouth. Yep, it's actually just north of Greymouth. Oh, there we go. Um, I had them around the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, it's like I think twenty minutes or something, or half an hour just north of Greymouth. Yep, Kafia. Kafia. Kafia is a lovely beach um, town village. It's very tiny. Mm-hmm. It's. Um, the best way to describe it is because I grew up in Te Aumutu. We used to do the drive, and it's pretty much directly west from Te Aumutu on the western coast of the North Island of New Zealand, kind of southwest if you're heading from Hamilton, which is a major landmark, mm-hmm. around the coast from Raglan, basically. Yes, it is. Yes, it's on the west coast, sort of, I guess, the upper northish west coast. And we've got Stratford. I played rugby with a couple of boys from Stratford, and they were the biggest pieces of... <laughs> 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 I've ever met in my life, but they were lovely dudes. Uh, near New Plymouth, best way to describe it, down the Taranaki. Yes, yep. um, and Mahia is the last one. Uh, Mahia, I believe, is you drive south from Gisborne and head towards Napier. It's sort of on the way just before Wairoa, so Hawke's Bay area. Yeah, so it's top of Hawke's Bay. It's a little, yes. yeah, that little sort of bit that sticks out right Correct. at the top. Yep. Cool, so how many, how many did we all get? Well, if you accept my answer about the, the location of Hekatahuna, then I got two. Two, yep. As I said, you can be quite generous with this. Uh, waffles? Yeah, two. Two? Eight. And and Sam got all Teen. of them. Yeah. <laughs> Eighteen. I'm surprised you didn't add uh, tau maka, whaka, uh, tanga, nga hango, kau, au, au, tau, amata, tia, tua, ripu, pu, kaka, piki, mawanga, Poro no ku poai kai whenua ki a tanua to a half. Uh, <laughs> Foreign listeners, he hasn't hit a stroke. Thing. That is a place. That is a place. It's pronounced um, Wellington. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also in um, Hawke's Bay, I think. Yeah, somewhere I, I, around, I think so Vaguely too. around there. But no, I had considered adding that, but I didn't think any of you would actually know where it is. Um, but also one of the questions that didn't make the cut was getting you guys to spell it um see if you could successfully spell it but i thought that that was too mean so very mean i um i'm planning to do this sort of episode with different questions with a bunch of americans and canadians so i might put it to them instead um which is extremely mean just get them to spell aotearoa (laughs) or get them to say aotearoa get them to say it yeah no that's true get them to find america on a map (laughs) Okay. In fairness, these are all history okay. podcasters I'm planning to do it with, so they should hopefully know where most things are. True. <laughs> all right, so question seven is a question around James Cook. The death of Captain James Cook was caused in part by him taking wood from a Hawaiian burial site and addressing the Hawaiian king, Kalani O'opu'u, in an insulting manner. 
Cook was bashed in the head and then stabbed before being taken away. His body was then prepared in the manner of a chief, which involved baking the body and removing the flesh before handing back some of the bones to his crew. Mmm, that's a grisly one. I feel like he got stabbed then bashed in the head. <laughs> I could be completely wrong, but I think it was in Tahiti, wasn't it? Yeah, that's, that was my other thing. I was like, I don't feel like it's Hawaii, I feel like it's Tahiti. Also, potentially, maybe we didn't get the bones back. Mm-hmm. Those are the only two that I could actually seriously think of. But... What are we thinking, Brad? said he took wood from a burial site. I think he took bones and eyeballs to do spooky shit. Like funny, sp- like he was going to put on like a puppet show for his, his crew members because he thought it'd be funny. <laughs> I wouldn't put that outside the realms of possibility. Um, but well, that- no, that's not what he did. He did actually steal wood. Um, Have you seen the price of timber say- like at Bunnings right now? It's, it's outrageous. So I don't actually blame it him is high. for stealing wood. But no, he did steal the wood. I'm just trying to remember. Did you say his, they retained his body and then brought it back to New Zealand or his remains or something like that? Uh, so the the Hawaiians gave back some of his bones. Okay. I must say, talk about uh, nominative determinism when your name is James Cook and that's how you died. Mm, what a way to go. What's the chances? <laughs> Poor old Jimmy <Genesee. laughs> It's like, hi, I'm James Cook. Someone's like, hmm, that gives me an idea. <laughs> mm. So he was baked. Um, that was in the manner of a chief. Is that why um, he? So they is did... that why he went and made some poor decisions? Because he was just... <laughs> <laughs> no. What if we? What, um, if we, what if we do this, man? So this one, I, this one, I guess I've, I've taken a slight liberty because I suspect that this did actually happen, but this is not the reason why he was bashed and then stabbed. Um, is that Cook didn't insult the king? Again, I'm sure he probably did, um, but that's not what he tried to do. He actually attempted to kidnap Yes, him. I know this! Yes! Yeah. Oh! So I, I have he heard that, but it's, it's a king. hearsay thing, isn't it? He tried to kidnap the king and hold him for ransom. Correct. Well, he, he invited the king onto his ship. Um, that's what he told the king he was doing. What he was actually doing was trying to kidnap him and hold him for yes. ransom. Yes! Yeah. So he was baked. Because, like, that sounds like a <laughs> plot of a, like, um, <laughs> Seth Rogen movie or something. <laughs> That is, yeah, he might have that is the plot get of stoned and kidnapped the king of Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, so he did try to do that. Um, all the while, as the king was walking towards, you know, the rowboat that they they get him to the big ship, um, his aides were telling him, "Hey, maybe don't do this. This seems like a bad idea." And then when they were literally at the boat, standing in front of the rowboat, the king said, "Yeah, actually, this is a really bad idea. Um, let's get him." Uh, and that's when he got bashed. And then when he hit the water, um, he got stabbed afterwards so yeah so that he didn't insult the king he actually tried to um kidnap him man Which those dudes watched some horror movies eh? like they they made sure that he was dead like, they knew what was up the, yeah they really wanted to make sure he was dead and then yeah they um a, as was the custom at the time of um dealing with human remains that were quite revered such as chiefs um they baked him uh removed his flesh and cleaned his bones and then they actually handed some some of the bones back but they kept some of the other bones um, because in some of the sources I read, um, they would sort of uh, revere them in the same way that Catholics revere saints. The Tahiti one, you you did say that. Um, you are on a slight thing there where there was another guy who got um, killed in Tahiti. Um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. I think he was Spanish. Um, but there was also another guy here in New Zealand, a French guy called Dufresne, who was hanging around New Zealand at the same time that of Cook's first voyage, and he was killed by Māori in a vaguely similar... Uh, he fished in a bunch of places he shouldn't have been, and he walked in a place, bunch of places he shouldn't have been, and then Māori said, actually, that's, that's a dick move, um, and then killed him for it. Good. Uh, <laughs> he was trying to tramp to that Lord of the Rings film set. <laughs> Maybe. But another fun fact about Cook's ship or at least the first voyage in the Endeavour, um, it was originally built as a coal hauler. So it was designed to um, load up coal and then ship it um, in relatively short distances. And as such, it was built like a brick shithouse and was actually very bad for sailing halfway around the world. And the reason that I know this is because I stood on a replica of the Endeavour and I spoke to, and I also went on the Spirit of New Zealand, and I chatted to the guys on the Spirit of New Zealand, and we kind of asked them, how does the Spirit of New Zealand compare to the Endeavour? And they said, the Endeavour is so shit that even in um, very, very low winds, 
the spirit of new zealand would beat it almost every single time and in fact the endeavor would almost be going backwards because it's so poorly hydrodynamic um it just is not very good at sailing um and the spirit of new zealand is just much better and more well designed as you would expect from a ship that's more recent they needed bob <laughs> semple to see a postcard of a tractor and turn that into exactly a <laughs> question eight um deals with um the new zealand nuclear free movement during a time when New Zealand had taken the controversial decision to become nuclear-free, the blowing up of the Greenpeace ship Rainbow Warrior by French agents was a significant event. Although technically not an attack on Aotearoa and thus not an act of war, many saw it as such, galvanising the public on our anti-nuclear position. At least we got some back though, with the agents responsible being imprisoned for 10 years in New Zealand before serving an additional sentence in France. I'm going to say bollocks, I don't think they served an additional sentence in France, I feel like they got almost lauded as heroes when they got back. Yeah, the French pardoned them almost pardoned them immediately and said, yep, you guys go on your way. They were welcome back as national heroes, weren't they? Because, like, we were screwing up their uh, nuclear tests in the Pacific and... You know, they thought we were being unfair for not letting them blow up tiny islands. Mm. I will neither confirm nor deny that until Brad has had a chance to give his answer. Uh, I don't know, something about Godzilla. Like, (laughs) 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 poorly formed formed joke answer involving nukes in the ocean uh, leading to (laughs) giant kaiju. I don't don't know. Yeah, (laughs) two plus two. New Zealand Godzilla. God of Nation Um, Zilla. There we go. (laughs) <laughs> hey, there, there's the joke. Waffles and Sam, you are correct. They did not serve um, a sentence in New Zealand, or they served a very, I believe they were meant to serve a very brief sentence in Tahiti, um, but they were released after a year or two, and in fact were praised, promoted, and decorated with honours upon returning to France. But yeah, they basically served no sentences at all, and, really, in, and in the grand scheme of things. France still hasn't apologised. Mm. France has still not apologised, no. And kind of because of this, the incident saw the French boycott New Zealand goods and vice versa, um, as basically the general public of each nation kind of did the only thing that they could, which was say, fuck France and fuck New Zealand and boycott anything made there. Um, This this is the only reason, the only reason that I'm not drinking champagne at the moment. Yeah. (laughs) I'm going to kind of show my age here, and I actually remember being at school, and we wrote a letter to the president of France asking him not to bomb Murura Atoll. I remember distinctly writing that letter, and I'd like to think that that is the reason why they didn't conduct further nuclear tests in the Pacific, was because of my (laughs) hand scrawl. Did you have your pen license at the time? Uh, Yes, I did, yeah. (laughs) Well, it, it was that and the giant radioactive tuatara that was still yeah, yeah, yeah. Combination of I'm mode, sure it was your letter. But I think Stop me and my all four of the efforts. I have received this poorly worded letter from a Kiwi nerd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Samuel, from a tiny nerd in, on the other side of the world. It went German there at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's discovered my secret identity as a German Frenchman. <laughs> Uh, Question nine is about the women's suffrage movement. Uh Kate Shepard is most well known for her leadership of the women's suffrage movement, leading to New Zealand being the first legislature in the world to universally give women the vote. But there were a number of other causes that she championed, such as prohibition, equal rights for women in all aspects of life, and was even even an early supporter of mixed member proportional, the electoral system that New Zealand would adopt in the 90s. She was also the first president of the National Council of Women and founded Aotearoa's first cycling club. I don't know enough about this to be completely accurate, but I feel like... Can you phrase as to what we were the first of? The first... We yeah, leading to I, New Zealand being the first legislature in the world to universally yeah. give women the right to I, vote. I don't agree with that. I believe that there are other legislations throughout history. I think that was history. super racist and give, give Maori. Yeah. Um, but I would, there, my thing was that there was actually other countries in Africa and other parts of the world that actually had given women mm-hmm. the vote. It's just they weren't mm-hmm. really recognised as being countries because this was in 
a primitive form of what is now known as modern society. So a lot of places mm-hmm. like that aren't really recognized. It's like there were certain states in America that had already given women the vote and no one really gave them mm-hmm. like the kudos that they deserve sort of thing. Whereas we like to say, we were the first country to give women the vote. And I'm, I'm going to say that they fought for a European descendant woman to get the vote, but not Maori woman, because I'm fairly sure there was a massive controversy around that. Unless the Maori women were honorary whites. <laughs> wow. That's a callback. I don't know okay. we to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. If somebody's um, just tuned into the second half of the podcast, they'll be like, um, what the hell are these guys doing? But... <laughs> I'm going to call bollocks because uh, Kate Shepard uh, did not found the uh, that that cycle club. She actually founded mm-hmm. the uh, the sick skating uh, tricks and grinds club. She was she was a mean vert enthusiast, and um, yep. yeah, she 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 tore up uh, every half pipe that she found. I believe she was the first woman to do a double backflip on a penny farthing. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> The first non moldy famous woman. pictures. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's get it out there. Brad, you're wrong. Ah, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, no. I'm still sure he was yes. right. Yeah. No, you... But um, Waffles and Sam, you have zeroed in on the thing uh, that was incorrect. I was very careful about my wording of um, that, that we were the first legislature to give women universal suffrage that is not correct um you did hit on it um correctly sam in that uh one u.s state did give women universal suffrage before we did um we were the first independent country to do so which is of course what you hear all the time is we were the first country to give women the vote which is correct but we were not the first legislature do you does anyone know which u.s state gave women the vote before we did. It definitely wasn't Arkansas. It was not Arkansas, no. <laughs> Wyoming? That is 100% correct. It yes. was Wyoming. I know this. I know yeah. this. And here's a fun fact for you. Utah actually gave women the vote at one point. Legislature is in Utah gave women the vote, thinking they were all going to vote for a certain direction so that they could influence US politics. And then when they didn't, yep. four years later, they took it away. Yeah, so kind of in the... I guess the caveat of this question is that there were a number of places that gave women the vote before us, not just Wyoming, um, but they usually had some sort of condition, such as you had to own land or you had to pay taxes and and that sort of stuff. And in some cases, it would later be rescinded um, in the case of, of Utah. Wyoming was the first kind of legislature that would give universal suffrage and then not renege on it later. Um and that was in 1869. Um, New Zealand didn't do it until 1893. Fun fact in that same vein, um, the Australian state of Victoria accidentally gave women the vote in 1864 um, in, in a total era, and that resulted in women being able to vote in the next election. And then once that election finished, they quickly corrected the law so that they could no longer vote. Um which is kind of sad in one sense, but I also thought slightly funny that um, that a bunch of white dudes had gone and accidentally made a law that gave women the vote, and then they were like, oh, actually, we didn't mean that. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, actually, you have given them the vote. What? <laughs> cool. Question 10 is to do with uh, kind of New Zealand invasive species. Australians. Men... Not Australians. <laughs> Nothing to do with Australians. Colonists. Not that either. <laughs> Many non-domesticated animals were brought to New Zealand by acclimatisation societies, the precursor to modern fish and game councils for a variety of reasons. Some practical, some vanity. Examples include rabbits and hedgehogs, because they reminded Europeans of Britain, stoats to control the rabbits, it didn't work, koi carp, perch and rudd for game fishing, starlings for eating insects that ate the crops, also didn't work, and brush tail possums to start a fur trade. I feel like all of that was true. I was like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> I turned into a really good podcast. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel potentially rabbits were also brought here for fur and food as well. Mm-hmm. But that's the only thing I could probably see. Mm-hmm. Or maybe starlings weren't brought to New Zealand. Or they were. I'm not sure. 
Starlings, I, I, I will tell you that starlings do exist in New Zealand. I know, but whether they were brought over by the societies or whether they just flew over yeah. them by themselves because they do have wings. Can, can I mm-hmm. have a gimme? Can you repeat that, Thomas? Cause it's like a... Sure. I'll repeat yeah. the bit that, I, that it has the, the, the problem mm. in it, which is the list. That's where the issue is. Examples include rabbits and hedgehogs, because they reminded Europeans of Britain, stoats to control the rabbits, it didn't work, koi carp, perch, and rudd for game fishing, starlings for eating insects that ate crops, also didn't work, and brush tail possums to start a fur trade. I think they brought the brush tail possums over just because they wanted to cuddle them. <laughs> or... Potentially the possums were just stowaways and it wasn't until they were already established in New Zealand that they decided then to start the fur trade in order to try to quell their numbers. I, I was thinking and, that about stoats as well because I was like, why would you bring a stoat here? Yeah, stoats to control the rabbits. Yeah, like, if you're going to bring something to control rabbits, surely you bring wolves. And a spider to catch the fly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A ring around uh, the I think road. they brought the hedgehogs over because they, they thought that they could run around really fast and steal gold rings from the Māori. <laughs> Is that a Harry Potter reference? Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh. The Sonic? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna take your nerd card away. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking of the, I was thinking of the little platypus thing from um oh, A little niffler, called? yeah. Yeah, the niffler. Yeah. The fish one also strikes me as a little bit weird because I don't really feel like they're invasive species. I don't really I don't know, like, uh, maybe we've done such good environmentalism to get rid of them as being an invasive species, but I feel like most of our waterways are fairly all right in terms of native species, but maybe I'm wrong. You would be fucking surprised. And this is really, gonna, I don't think any of you guys know this, so this is going to blow your fucking minds. <laughs> and that's why I put this question in here. So you are correct. Um, so I'll give you the point, yes. Sam, because you did land on... The thing that's incorrect, it's the koi carp, the yeah. perch, and the rudd. Um, they weren't here, br- weren't brought here for game fishing. Trout were bought, brought here for game fishing, that, yeah. same as salmon. But those three species weren't. I'll do an episode on this at some point. But just to give you a taster, these weren't released as game fish. They were mostly released by one man who was a communist called Stuart oh, Smith. Yes, I know the story, but you tell he it, went, yes. He went on a one-man crusade to release a bunch of fish into New Zealand waterways that are now considered noxious, meaning that they are to be killed on sight. Breeding or releasing them can incur fines of up to $100,000 and or up to five years in prison. Why did he do it? It's a complicated story to do with the class divide in angler fishing that brought itself from Britain. Trout was seen as the rich man's fish, and Smith wanted to ensure that everyone got a chance to catch something substantial, which those three species were considered fairly substantial and poor man's angling fish in Britain, hence releasing what is known as coarse fish, due to how they feel when you touch the scales. He was personally responsible for releasing 15,000 fish between 1964 and 1987, according to his own notes. Where did he keep them before that? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. The patience to keep a fish alive all the way here to then, like, breed it with its, you know, friends and then release what the hell? Like, Yeah, so this was part of the reason that he got caught is because he had a bunch of really big tanks in his garage. Oh, right. um, and so when the cops finally cottoned on to what he was doing and then raided his property, um, they found these huge tanks with all these illegal fish in them and, and then were like, yeah, well, that's... That's clearly not not good. Um, so yeah, so it's a whole big thing. Um, a lot of the reason New Zealand has problems with, it, with its waterways is because of this one guy <laughs> that went around in the 60s, 70s and 80s just releasing random fish oh, I just... into various waterways, mostly around sort of Auckland and kind of um, upper Waikato kind of area. I'm just imagining American listeners listening to this and just like, when FBI raids in place, like they raid a cartel, they find five hundred million dollars in cash. They find twenty <laughs> yeah. tons of cocaine. Yeah. New Zealand <laughs> fish. Cool. So that brings us to shiny question three. Guess which tagline goes with which movie? Oh, gee, I hate you. Uh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I, I've sent you over Twitter again a bunch of taglines that are associated with a bunch of. Uh, all New Zealand, and they're all films. 
So no TV shows or anything like that. They're all New Zealand films that were, uh, yeah, all of them were filmed in New Zealand. All had New Zealand actors in them. And by and large, I think all had a New Zealander uh, directing them. So while you guys look at that, for the listeners, um, the different ones or the different taglines we've got are Nature Just Got Gangster. It's never too late for the ride of your life. Bravery is contagious. Where the warrior spirit was born. Luckily, love is blind. Get the flock out of here. And you're invited. So these are all taglines that were on posters for films. Shall I, shall I just start throwing out some ones that I feel like I know the answers to? Yep. Just yeah, man. Go for it. New. You're invited to Cerny's wedding. Okay. Yep. Nature just got gangster. Uh, Hunt for the water people. Yep. Get the flock out of here, black sheep. I was going to yep. say That's that. That's the only one I knew. <laughs> it's never too late for the ride of your life is... Oh, damn it. Goodbye, pork goodbye, pie. Pork it's pie. not goodbye, pork pie, is it? It's not goodbye, pork pie, no. World's fastest Indian? It is world's fastest yes. Indian. Yes. <laughs> goodbye, pork pie is a really good guess. But yeah, no, I threw in... Because, of course, from Invercargill... Uh, so have to throw in uh, World's Fastest oh, Indian in there somewhere. Absolutely, of course you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Roger B. Yep. That's, great. That's great movie. So we've got nature... Sorry, no, we did that one. We've got Bravery is Contagious, Where the Warrior Spirit Was Born, and Luckily Love is Blind. I feel like Where the Warrior Spirit Was Born have. is a trick question for us to say once we're warriors. I don't think it's going to be that. I feel like it's going to be Utu. That You are correct that I put it in there because... I thought one of you might say once more yeah. warriors. Isn't it like um, broken because... broken land or something that or broken oh, something that, broken to, promises? It's to... Was it whale rider or something? Maybe you're really close, Brad. Like really, like oh. quite close. Broken bed. <laughs> broken <laughs> bread. The warrior spirit was born. <laughs> Courtney Place on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> the Battle of K Road. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah broken. It, it's like a prequel. To Once for Warriors, I think, or something. What becomes of the oh, Once with the Broken? Yeah, what becomes of the Broken Hearted? Broken Hearted is the is the sequel, I think, yeah. isn't it? To um, Once for Warriors, but no, that's not what it is. Where the Warrior Spirit was born is actually the Deadlands. Oh, <sighs> yeah. So it's the one with um, James Rolleston um, yeah. in it, where he plays like a young sort of Maldi. Yeah, I guess a Māori warrior. And he goes into the Deadlands to find uh, this other guy who is, like, really awesome and he wields two patu at the same time and it's, like, really fucking cool. Um, and the whole film's in Te Reo, isn't it? The whole film's in Te Reo, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, and then later, TVNZ and um, Shudder, I think it's called, the American, um, uh, like, streaming horror. Yeah, horror, that yeah, does horror. Yeah, yeah. They... they um, did a collab where they did like a kind of prequel to um to the deadlands um where it was a tv series um instead and it was all about zombies and shit and it was like really yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. cool uh yeah. <laughs> that one wasn't all in today there was a lot of today yeah. in it um but yeah that was like really cool i thought it was really good so the only other Ooh. ones that we've got luckily um, lovers blind yep. is that eagle versus shark Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Fuck yes. Yes. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes. I, I was like, that's a Taika Waititi film. Yep. And I was God damn it, where is it coming? Yep. Oh. Yes. Yep. Damn it. So the last one we've got is Bravery is Contagious. Bravery is Contagious. This is probably the hardest one on the list. Shorten Street, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Shorten Street, the musical, the movie. The series. Yes. <laughs> the game. Yes. yes. <laughs> Do we have any guesses? Oh, every single Kiwi film I'm thinking of has nothing to do with bravery or being contagious. It is The Dark Horse. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is really disappointed in himself. I, I so am. I can tell I'm tired because I looked at that and I was like, I wonder if that's Dark Horse. And then I went through all the rest of them. And then by the time I got through all the rest of the Kiwi films in my head, by the time I came back to that one now, five minutes later, I'm like, huh? Huh? Yeah. It's got like Stan Walker in it, right? Or am I thinking uh, of something nah, else? I nah, haven't nah, seen not it. Stan. No. no, it's um, Cliff Curtis. Oh, okay. Um, as a, I believe he's autistic. 
Um, but the general gist is that the character he plays, it's like a biopic um, about a guy, a, a Maori guy who was really fucking good at chess um, and like did really well for himself through chess and um, inspired like a whole chess club and stuff and like helped like a bunch of um, younger Maori to kind of um, do really well with chess and, and that sort of thing. So it's basically a Cliff Curtis plays chess for like two ish hours um which is actually like really it's actually really good but it's not a very well-known new zealand film it kind of fell uh, went under the radar i was about to say we could no, but um, it is a good film would yeah, recommend I was about to say, highly recommend. We, we could get the movie podcast to talk about his favorite new zealand film but hey you know you, you take my time <laughs> we don't have time for that <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he's not autistic he's schizophrenic he's also homeless. schizophrenic and he, right. he goes to save yeah. his family who are getting like gangs and all that sort of stuff it's amazing Easily, it's the New Zealand yeah. film that I when people talk about. Oh, what's the movie from New Zealand? Oh, Lord of the Rings. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You need to watch this. This is a proper New Zealand film. It's like really good. Again, American in, <laughs> American listeners, you guys have films about NFL teams and football teams and basketball. And yeah. <laughs> what about the pulsing thrill ride that is a chess game? Chess game. Yeah. Hey, Queen's Gambit did well on Netflix. It so. Did. You know, That's chess true. is popular, it, it is. and yeah. there's this whole controversy about a chess yeah, champion yeah. and anal beads and all that sort of stuff. Chess is in the news. <laughs> that you're feeling like you just want some non-controversial chess stuff. Watch. Judging that. by me and Brad's yep. faces, I think we're both going the anal beads. What? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, was, uh, it's a whole yeah, it's a whole thing. We don't have time. Uh, no, for no, it. I mean, my, my face know. right now is because of anal beads, but for a different reason. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So that brings us to our real life question: something to do with uh, something that you possibly may do in your lifetime um, in New Zealand. Um, which again, we're going to bring it back to the top with politics. To become a member of parliament in New Zealand is relatively straightforward, barring the whole being elected thing. But becoming father or mother of the house is much more difficult. The title refers to the person who has had the longest continuous career as an MP and has been held by a number of high-profile ministers, including Apigada Nanta, Robert Muldoon, Winston Peters, Helen Clark, and, most recently, Trevor Mallard. <laughs> Top quality <laughs> podcasting. Mm. I, I would say it's one of them. I couldn't tell you who. Okay. One of them wasn't the the longest running. Sure. Yeah. That'll just be my gunning for a half point. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I, the wording you use, longest running continuous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm. Um, I feel like, I mean, I could be way off base, but like, I feel like Winston Peters, he's so... Like he's long standing, but he's he's so yeah. like controversial and in and out of shit all the time. I feel like mm-hmm. there's probably been some break somewhere that like disqualifies him from contention in that list. As a fellow short ass, I feel like he's short standing more than anything. But I would make an argument around the qualification side of it. Yeah, well, similar to what you're saying about like you yeah, have to serve for a certain number of years, blah blah blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I'll give that to all three of you because you're all pretty much got in the ballpark. You're all equally um, wrong. <laughs> you're yes. all equally wrong. No, Brad, you, you hit the nail on the head. Um, Winston Peters. Winston Peters. Winston Peters. That been. sounds. Uh, Winston Peters. I'd vote for that. <laughs> Wings and Peters. Wings and Peters. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, yes. Hello. Are you looking at my Uber Eats on my phone? What the? <laughs> Um, yeah, Winston Peters, um, although having served as an MP longer than nearly anyone else in Parliament for basically its entire history, it wasn't continuous. He's actually had three stints in Parliament, um, 1971 to 1981, 1984 to 2008, and then 2011 to 2020. Um, so although that collectively, um, in comparison to anyone who's been in Parliament um, while he was also in Parliament, uh, for example, in 2020, although all of those combined actually equals to more than anyone else, um, because it wasn't continuous, it doesn't count. Um, so Nick Smith was actually the um, father of the house while he was in Parliament most recently. Um, and then it changed to Trevor Mallard when um, he left. Um, 
and Helen Clark was the first mother of the house. In fact, I believe she's the only mother of the house. Um, I mean, Jacinda's had a baby, so... Well, yeah, I mean, she is a mother of a house. Mother in the house. Uh, Mother yes. in the house, um, but not the mother of the house. Um, and sort of fun fact, there is also a not really recognized title of baby of the house, um, which goes to the youngest person in parliament based on their age. Oh, sure. um, <laughs> any any thoughts on who the current baby of the house Chloe is? Chloe is. Chloe Swarbrick? It is Chloe Swarbrick um, because she was elected in 2017 at the age of 23. Um, prior to that, it was um, Winston Peters, weirdly enough. Simeon... Winston Peters, weirdly <laughs> enough. Simeon Brown or some... I don't know. No, it wasn't Simeon Brown. It was Todd Barclay um, from... I believe he was the National MP for Southland. Um, so when he left with his big scandal, um, it was then Chloe Swarbrick after that. So I've got one question. Do... Yeah? How did you get so handsome? <laughs> It's, um, it's all the plastic surgery and Botox. Wings and pizzas. <laughs> so remember, guys, support the Patreon. Well, someone's got to pay for it. Uh... <laughs> Editor Rob, you have a choice here to either like cut this as silence or insert some sort of like jaunty, fun music. <laughs> Uh, editor rob is gonna find this much more interesting than the standard episodes because normally it's just me going uh and then this happened oh fuck no i pronounced that wrong uh hang on uh <laughs> editor rob i want to have your babies oh my god okay so the score the final scores which are very important uh that's <laughs> why we're all here interestingly in joint second place with 16 points, it's bread and waffles. Well, you know, and... it, was, uh, just, it was fun Suck to it. come along and, you know. Have... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> in an outcome that no one could have predicted, <laughs> it's Sam in the lead with a full 28 points. I Ooh. never win shit. And so I don't know how to be like gracious and winning. So I fucking eat shit, boys. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Suck all of my balls, all three of them. Fuck it. <laughs> so not not just even like a not even just like a, oh he inched forward like it, it's a commanding lead with the geography knowledge. I think is really what Hans did it. episode one hundred and one <laughs> coming to you. I'm hosting. Fuck these clowns. I'm inside <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> all your podcasts are belong to us. I own all of them. <laughs> So, uh, so there's the thing I didn't tell you guys is uh, whoever wins had to take this over for me. So uh, thanks, Sam. Uh... It's just going to become that geography podcast we talked about earlier. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kiki, uh, 1,000 people. <laughs> Greater Auckland area, 1.6.29 million people. Quick, Tom, si- sign off the episode yes. quick. Okay, well, uh, on that bombshell... Um, thank you guys for, for coming on and doing this dumb thing for the 100th episode of History of Aotearoa New Zealand. It has taken us four years to get this far, and I haven't even hit Abel Tasman. I never thought this was going to happen, <laughs> but here we are. So thank you again for coming on. Um, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, you three guys um, have been quite um, supportive in Hans's journey thus far. Um, in part by uh, allowing me onto your podcasts at various points, um, but also just generally because your Kiwi podcast is in, there's like six of us, so we kind of got to stick together. Uh- <laughs> Solidarity. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, um, starting with waffles, I guess, do you want to go around and say who you are, what you do, and where to find you? Yeah, kia ora. My name is Waffles. Uh, I'm trying to be a Christchurch-based uh, comedian, um, I have a podcast, Waffles and Mates, talk about things. It's currently releasing monthly. I am working on getting that schedule down, but it's hard work doing a podcast. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm actually genuinely proud of everything you've done with this podcast, and it's uh, awesome to finally be able to give back in some way. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, Sam, 
Where do we find you and what do uh, you do? Yeah, you can find me at 11 Monmouth Street in Tauranga. <laughs> <laughs> I the joke. I feel like people should Google that and figure out where that place actually is. I'm not going to spoil it. It's one of those soobs who were talking about earlier. Monmouth Street, Tauranga. You can find me there, guys. Great place. Great place to hang out. Uh, no, I host a podcast, a movie podcast, movie reviews and 20 Qs. Uh, it's just general nonsense. We basically take a film. We ask 20 questions about it. But rather than being deep and philosophical, well, we do kind of get deep and philosophical. In fact, that's one of our questions. But we try to be a little bit stupid with it. So we'll go like, you know, what flavor pizza is this movie or what line from this movie would be the worst thing to hear after sex. And I've had these guys on every single one of these guys. I've had them all on. So I always put their podcast in the, you know, title description. So you guys can search them out. They've always been amazing guests. Um, so happy to be here. You call this dumb. This is the best thing I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> in like the last couple of years i don't care if somebody's pointing out that i've made two kids in the last couple of years then what who cares <laughs> people have been making kids forever no one's made a hundredth episode of history of our Twitter or new zealand i'm so proud to be here <laughs> thank you that's what i'm trying to say thank you thanks yeah no that's awesome it's um yeah no, it's where to start right <laughs> So, yeah, no, I've just, um, mostly because I've just Googled where 11 Monmouth Street in Tauranga <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, you got it. You got it. So I'll, uh, I'll, um, I'll leave that for, um, for everyone else to Google. Um, and Brad, uh, where do we find you? Uh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm Brad. And um, what all of the listeners of this podcast need to do is unsubscribe immediately and go and replace <laughs> this in your feed with Fate of Ison. <laughs> Um, it's a D and D podcast that I created, uh, about four and a half odd years ago. And we just recently finished our big, long first story and have just started, uh, a second one and it's good and fun and silly. <laughs> and it's this, it's a very good mixture of like serious world, serious story, real consequences and peril and pl- like juxtaposed with players who are just absurd ridiculous comedians and take nothing i do or say seriously amazing um so as mentioned um i've been on all of these guys's podcasts at some point um so obviously i endorse them um uh, in some way um so i highly recommend going checking out the podcasts of all of these guys um they're all very funny people it's all very entertaining um no matter what your flavor of um humor may be and um, there is something at least from one of these guys that i'm sure will uh tickle your fancy um so oh, the only you... thing will tickle it's not the only <laughs> it's not the only thing will tickle exactly um so if you do want to check any of these guys out i'll put links to these shows in the description and once again thank you very much guys for coming on um and doing this uh with me i, I if i'm entirely honest you got a lot more questions than i thought you would <laughs> so that's really good. <laughs> um, this is the New Zealand education system at works, folks. Yes, yeah. Um, so hopefully when they bring in New Zealand history properly into the curriculum, it'll be even better. But yeah, with that, uh, once again, thank you very much for joining me. Um, Haidu to atu, hoki to mai. We'll see you for the next fuck 600 episodes <laughs> or however long it takes me to finish this fucking we'll thing. We'll see you for the next fuck. Tur- <laughs> Anal beads out. <laughs> it's coming for you, Rob. Oh, uh, Rob, you have to leave that in. You have to, Rob. That's how we. That's how we finish. Leave that in. <laughs>